Okay, good. So the last step that we need uh, to go for you know, learning to do modern application is uh, handling the communication between the JavaScript application and uh, the web server. So in a way, we are shifting the logic of the application from the server to the browser, if we want. Okay. Uh, so it's a different way of, uh, uh, of developing application. In the old web times, so every, all the logic was on the server and the browser was just presentation, uh, dumb presentation. Right now, all the logic is on the client. Uh, if you, pro for example, if you load the web page of uh, Twitter, it's empty. The, HT the HTML page of, from Twitter, when you get it, for if, if you go a uh, sewer like for getting the page from Twitter, it's empty, really. It's only uh, an empty column. And everything is generated dynamically by the JavaScript code in the page. Huh? They call them single page applications. A page application that loads one page, and then all the JavaScript code will fill the content of that page and uh, react. And how this application works is by calling methods, rest, usually with the rest calls, onto the web server. So the server doesn't generate the HTML anymore. It will generate just one container. And the HTML is actually generated by the JavaScript code and uh, with information from the, from the um, server side uh, in that comes and goes in, in JSON format. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is enabled by uh, um, the possibility of uh, communication between the JavaScript code and the server. You remember that I mentioned that the JavaScript is executed in a sandbox. Huh? It's a very constrained and limited environment for security reasons. And it cannot do most of the usual things, uh, like saving a file, opening a socket, opening a new connection, and so on. In a very limited case, however, JavaScript can make a new HTTP request to the same web server where the page was uh, loaded from. So I cannot make, in a page, an arbitrary request to any web server in the world, only to the same web server that gave me the, a, the JavaScript in the first place. So I can call home, but I can call anywhere else. The JavaScript call, uh, code can call home when it wants, can call the same web server from which uh, the JavaScript code was uh, originally um, the downloaded. So this is the limitation. Within this limitation, we have a, a, an object in JavaScript that enables a new way of programming which started in 2005, so it's nearly 10 years ago, with the first uh, application implementing this method. Uh, it's called, uh, it was at the time Google Suggest. So now, right now we take it for granted every text area we should have an auto completion. Google in 2005 was the first website at all that gave us that functionality. When I start typing, I can have a list uh, of possible completions or possible suggestions. And, uh, this technique was later called AJAX. AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Uh, the XML part uh, is now outdated because we are not using XML anymore. We are using JSON which, because it's much lighter and much faster to process. So, but the name AJAX remained. Hmm? It stands for Asynchronous JavaScript. Um, asynchronous JavaScript means that uh, a, a JavaScript code can make a call to the web server, and remember that making a call to a web server is a very slow operation. It can, take, it can take hundreds of milliseconds. So you cannot imagine the JavaScript code waiting for the request. It sends a request, and asynchronously, later, when the request is, is completed, an event will, will handle the result of the request. So like we are doing normally with, with, with a page where we're setting the, the event tender and then later the event will be fired. Right now we are, we are applying the same programming method for the communication with the server. <coughs> and this was enabled by the introduction of a, an object in the JavaScript basic library, the JavaScript uh, core library, that called, it was called, it is called, it's still there, XML HTTP request. A long name for a JavaScript object. Uh, a lot of people just abbreviate it like XHR, hmm? like the initials of the, so the XHR object 
is the object is able is only object in all the javascript library that is able to open a connection to the server hmm? all the others all the other attempts uh, for opening a connection will be killed by the sandbox okay um, how does this object work we i will be quick here in this explanation because we are again we will not use the basic javascript object but we will we will be use, using the the much simpler jquery version okay which is much much simpler to write uh, this object tracks the status of uh, a request so imagine a javascript code uh, a javascript uh, code yes that needs to have some information from the server so i want to know imagine google suggests the user typed ABC, and I want to know the possible continuations of the string. What are the strings, the valid, likely, probable strings that start with ABC? I, need, I want to have the, this information. Probably I have a get, get slash completion slash question mark text equal ABC. Some URL to call uh, for getting this information. So I need uh, to initialize the HTML, the HTTP call, and wait for the response. And so this is a long process. The HTTP call uh, can be not sent, unsent. It can be already sent. The response already started to arrive. The body is being loaded, and the body is being completed. Uh, I, we, we will show the state machine diagram in a second of uh, all the stages in which a, an HTTP request goes through from the JavaScript point of view. And this state is uh, in this ready state variable. So this X, XHR object contains a very important variable is, that is called the ready state that tells us how far is the request into, into its completion. And for managing the request, I have uh, two main methods. Open for creating the request and specifying the URL and the method, get or post and the URL. And uh, send, which is a method for actually sending the request. So I prepare the object and I send it to the request. And of course, when the response arrives, I have a response text uh, very string uh, that contains uh, the body of the response. Uh, there is also, of course, an event here on ready state change. An event is generated every time the state is changed. So this object fires events when the connection is open, when the connection starts loading, when the uh, request closes and they can register a, 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 an handler on this ready state change event for getting the result when the loading is complete so it's quite complex actually this is the behavior of all any time the javascript needs to contact the server that request needs to go through all this step. So we have, uh, we create a new XML HTTP request object. We call the open method by providing the URL. We call the send method. And then we wait. We wait for the response. So right in this part, we are in the preparation phase. We are sending the request. And the, 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 the object, uh, the ready state, changes from unsent to opened, to opened again. At this point, when I call send, the HTTP request packet goes and goes to the server, and the server, sooner or later, will reply with an HTTP response packet. When the response, HTTP response comes back to the caller, to the browser, the, X, the object, the XML HTTP request object, moves to, the, to this header received state 
and then immediately to the loading stage. And the loading stage may, may be long because maybe the body of the response is long. And when the body is finished, the body of the HTTP response, that can be an image, can be a JSON, can be an HTML, can be a zip file, whatever, then the connection goes to the done stage. So only at this point, when the connection is done, only at this point we have the full body available. So we have the full response available. In our example, we have the full list of completions that can, we can use to populate uh, a drop-down menu for the user to select. So actually, we create the object, we call the send method, and we wait until the, the, the ready state changes to done. At that point, we need to call an event handler when the state is changed to done to retrieve the response and process it. So the code is something like that. We need to register a non-ready state change method always that let's start from from here we want we need to register an already state change function event handler that uh, only does something when the ready state is uh, for that means uh, uh, done all the other state changes are not in, in not very interesting for us the events is fired anyway because the event is fired anytime the state changes from 0 to 1, from 1 to 2, to, from 2 to 3, and so on. We are only interested in processing the response when the state is 4 done. So there will be always some code like this. Before sending the event, we should record a function that will process in some way the response text from this object asynchronously. This is where the A comes. Because now I send in the request, and after I send the request, I can do nothing more because in this code because I need to wait until the response arrives. When the response will arrive, then I do something else. But in the meantime, I, I have nothing to do because I'm still waiting. Hmm? OK, this is a, uh, well, an example in basic JavaScript code. But as I mentioned, uh, we don't want to use uh, basic JavaScript. And we have a look uh, instead on how jQuery handles uh, the Ajax function. Where is that? Here. There is actually. Uh, we, uh, what, what does it say? Okay. There is a, a set of very simplified uh, methods that we can call. They are methods of the uh, jQuery object. So it's jQuery.get, jQuery.post, something. It's not applied on a specific element. It's applied when you execute the code. So in this case, you are just specifying the method that can be get or post, sorry, the URL that needs to be called, uh, the parameters, if you want, and the callback function. So the, here we should have function, braces and brackets, and uh, uh, with a code to execute when the request arrives. And this get method will create XML HTTP request, send it, uh, register the event handler, and so on. Um, if we know, if we already know that the result would be a JSON file, we can call get JSON that will automatically parse the JSON and return as an object corresponding, a JavaScript object corresponding to the content of the response. So get will just return the, the response as a string. Get JSON will return the response as an object. 
because it was encoded in JSON. Or if the response is an HTML fragment, because maybe a response is a piece of HTML that we need to fill a given div, we can use an even more simplified method, which is load. That applies to a given element. Say, okay, to this element, replace the content of this element with what you load from some URL. So in this case, it automatically fetches, does the request, and the synchronous fetches the result, the response, and when the response arrives, it's used to fill or to replace the contents of this uh, uh, selector, of this uh, HTML element, this, this uh, intro block. Okay? Uh, you find, uh, again, all the information, the more detailed information, in the AJAX section here in jQuery, where is you have the set of event tenders, what they call the shorthand methods. The shorthand methods are the easy to call functions. Get, uh, get JSON, post probably, and load. Load does everything by itself. Doesn't need even an event tender to process the response. And the get, uh, it's easier to write, to see. You have the get rest to call, the parameters to be sent, and then the success function, a function that will be executed if the request succeeds. So only if the request succeeds, then this function is called. It, you don't need to monitor all the intermediate states. Only when you get to the state number four with no errors, this function is called. And uh, possibly, if you want, uh, if you already know what is the data type that you are receiving, you can specify it. Hmm? Or the get JSON, it's, it's similar. Load JSON encoded data from the server. And so the function, the success function, receives. Uh, not just the text of the response, but the data as an object. So the JSON is already parsed for us. We don't need to parse it. Hmm? So these are the, the two main, uh, probably most useful methods. But if you want to do something more sophisticated, or you have specific needs, uh, you can always use the, the, the method called AJAX dollar dot ajax which uh, can do everything we have a settings object and this settings object within this setting you can set every you have pages and pages of parameters of uh, uh, for changing for defining the behavior of this object so you can do everything so the actual uh, object that jquery uses is this uh, dollar dot ajax object the shortened methods that you see, they just uh, are sh equivalent to this AJAX call. So uh, the get method is equivalent to calling the AJAX low-level interface uh, with, the, with this URL, this data, this uh, success function, this data type, and all the rest is left to the, to the default values and so on. Okay, so we are uh, in some way hiding all the complexity of managing the uh, XHR object behind these uh, simpler, I call it simple, comparatively, uh, interface uh, called the equity.ajax. Hmm? So, um, what can we do here? Well, right now we only use the JavaScript to enhance the behavior of a server-based application. By the way, if you want to see the code that we have been playing with, uh, is in the lab 5, uh, because actually we started from the solution of lab 5 and we, we went further, in a, in a branch. So it's not in the master, it's in a branch called with Bootstrap and JavaScript. So the code that we have developed up to now, where we change interface using Bootstrap and, the uses, and we use JavaScript and jQuery 
to do what we did uh, in the previous hour. But it's still a web application where the logic is on the server. Now we want to do something different. I want to move in the logic of uh, lab six. You remember lab, lab six uh, is where you developed uh, an, a REST server for the to-do list. So there were methods for implementing the basic functionalities of the to-do list uh, data type. So I created, I extracted a different lab, a different project from Python Lab 6 uh, with the, in the branch uh, uh, edge client. So in Lab 6, uh, you have the master, which is corresponding to the lab. I lost it. Okay. But if you go to edge client, uh, for now it's just a branch with the same functionality, just a copy. But we are developing, we are playing now in this branch and try to construct some complete application or the first step of a complete application because of what we can do in half an hour uh, by interacting with the server side. Actually, you already had one example because in the master, you have uh, one JavaScript file which is called to do app.js. Uh, that was developed by Luigi. You didn't see it. We just so told you, okay, use this application, it works. Okay. Now we are trying to learn how to develop that functionality. So we start from an empty page or from the existing page and go on. Hmm? Okay, so I'm working on the Edge Client uh, branch. And even, even here. So remember that we have. Uh, this uh, server application that uh, only renders uh, an index page. This is the only interactive call. You call the, the root page, and then all the other calls are for the REST API. Okay, get the list of tasks, get the details of a specific task add a new task with a post method, uh, replace a, a task with a put, an existing task with a new version, and delete a task, and that's it. Huh? These are the methods implemented by the REST server that you, you implemented in lab number six. Okay? So how do we construct, create a front end for this? So one idea could be to create sorry, a template this is just a, an empty template very similar to the previous one maybe you can uh, even copy some parts from the previous exercise which is the empty list of tasks the index page doesn't contain any task it only contains the container for future tasks. Oh, so if we open the, the application, let me check whether, okay, we need first to close the other one, otherwise port number 5000, and we execute the task server. It's something like this. A table, task, urgent action under task we should have the description of the task urgent would be yes or no and action could contain the action the the icons for deleting adding modifying and so on a task okay right now it's empty and um, and we have uh, the functionality for insert a new task we want to implement uh, functionalities all the needed functionalities directly in JavaScript on this page. So actually this page that starts up uh, empty actually includes at the end uh, some JavaScript. We need, we, we need to create, it doesn't exist yet. Let's don't, don't look at this, which is which is implementation. Tasks. Uh, .javascript. So this will be our implementation. 
in jQuery, in Ajax, and uh, making a REST call. So the first step would be this page uh, is too empty to be true. We need to fill this table. So this is the skeleton of the page. After the skeleton is loaded, the JavaScript will call the server and will retrieve the current list of tasks. And we'll use this current list of tasks to populate this table, to add new rows to this table. Okay? The server, the, the index HTML doesn't contain the task at the beginning. It's empty. We will add dynamically these tasks later. When later? Immediately after the page has been loaded. So again, we have a document ready. Document dot ready. Call for, with a function. that will be executed at the loading of the page. And uh, just for clarity, I don't want to write all the code here. I'm calling a function. So uh, load task. And this function I define just for clarity. So this function would load from the server all the tasks, current tasks, and fill the table task list. Of course, this function will be called automatically after, right after the page is loaded. Uh, how, what, what should we do? We should first see the tasks call that will uh, return the full list of tasks, uh, in which format? Uh, we have some examples. No, this is an example for the post. We'll uh, return a tasks object uh, containing all the list of tasks. Every task uh, is uh, db interaction dot get tasks, an object with three. So it all already, because in, in, um, in REST you could have uh, two possibilities. The get tasks method could only return the IDs, the ID, task number 1, 2, 7, 23, and then you need to retrieve each one of them in, um, one by one with additional calls. Or in this case, it, al it already gives us all the details of all the tasks. So we already have everything. We need to get it from the server. So in our JavaScript, we need to get in JSON, because the response would be a JSON file. From the first parameter is the URL. The URL is slash. Uh, oh, sorry. This one. The second parameter, the JSON, I don't remember. Let's look at the documentation. Shorthand methods, get JSON. The data 
that uh, will be sent to the server. We don't have any data to send. We don't have any parameters to send. So this can be skipped. And the third one is the function. So we can only, we just need to specify the function. And in this, in this case, the function is not a normal event tender, but it's an event tender with some information. Already receives three parameters. The data, sex status, and this object. So data, status, and jQuery XML HTTP request. This is the, the meaning of this trend name. These are the parameters, the values that we can use inside the body of the function if we need them, and especially the data. So when function load task is called, this request is sent to the server. Later on, hundreds of, of milliseconds later, the response, the, the HTTP request will be completed and this function is called. The data would contain the JSON object with all the uh, tasks. Okay? How can we be sure? Try to print them. Okay, before doing something more fancy, let's see, <laughs> ensure whether the, the data is called and how it looks like. Console.log writes something in the console uh, of the on the browser developer tool. Okay, so let's try to to run this. Not found what? Ah, okay, because it's not called index, it's just called the slash. The route is different. What happens here? Okay. I didn't have the path for the database. Copy, paste. Okay. First task. Okay, so what did I do? I, in the browser, I opened the developer tools in the console, I reloaded the page. So right now the page is, is identical, because we, I didn't modify the page yet. But the document already has called the function. The function, let's see at the network. If I reload this page, what you see is uh, the call of the root element, all the bootstrap jQuery and so on. We load tasks.js, it's our JavaScript code, and then 
the URL API 1.0 tasks is being called, so it's a new request that time, uh, comes from the XHR object from this line of code, of our code. So all of these, the first ones, are requests coming from the browser, native requests from the browser. This one, the last one, is a request coming from our JavaScript code. And the result of the request, uh, we logged uh, on the, in the console, which is converted into an object, it's actually a dictionary with the property tasks. This property is an array of six elements, and these elements have a description ID urgent property, description ID urgent property, and so on. So this is the object representation of the JSON response corresponding to the database content of the task. It wasn't there in the page at the beginning. It was retrieved later through an asynchronous call. And what do we do with this information? We add new rows to a table, to the table. So we need to play with jQuery. So we have the data here. And then, OK, okay we, we don't want to log it all, every time, but we can comment it. Now what we need to do is to um, populate the table. With the new data. First of all, we need the, to select the table with ID, task list. This is our table. In this case, we define a table instead of a list for having the different fields available. And then what can we do is to add some row to, a, to the table. So let's have a look at JavaScript, uh, sorry, a jQuery, how to For example, we have uh, an after method, an append method that are used to add the new elements to the DOM. In particular, append in sent context specified by a parameter to the end of each element in the set of the page match element. Hmm? It seems the good match for us. No, but, but it needs uh, the last element. So again, okay. You specify an element and it appends a new content after that element and inside it. You see that you have div class inner slash div and the new content is applied at appended at the end of it. So we can append a new row to the table, to the end of the table. So we can, uh, we not uh, to the table, but to the probably table body. Append. A table element is composed internally of two different invisible elements, which is a table heading, T head, and the table body. All the rows are inside the table body. We need to append a new row. And how can we generate that? But well, the easiest way is to do directly write some HTML. <coughs> tr slash tr td slash td. And the first, let's make a, a, just a trial, ABC. TD, sorry. sorry. One. Let's 
see what happens here. I'm appending one row to the table and seeing what happens. Of course, I mean, we need to replace this ABC with the actual contents of the task, but always one step at a time. Okay, you see? ABC, one. We will fit the icons later. And if I repeat this many times, sorry, like this, okay, many rows are appended at the end of the table. So in append, I select a container element and they contain a new uh, item inside the container. In this case, the container is the table body. Okay, I need, of course, to replace this with the actual elements, the actual um, tasks. So I iterate uh, task in data, data, uh, so there was tasks, if I know wrong. You remember, data is a dictionary that contains one element, tasks, that is an array. So data is a dictionary, data tasks is the array. And I iterate over the elements of the array, hopefully. And for each element, I add one line containing not ABC, but the task name, so that would be task what was it? I don't remember. Description probably then with the bug and then the second instead of the one Have task urgent. So let's try to make it more readable. It's not it's not really readable, but if I'm not wrong. I, I am iterating over the array of, of all the tasks. On every row, I add one row to the table by a, extracting the properties description and urgent from the JSON. I hope these are the correct names, but we'll find out soon. Reload with shift. Okay, something is happening, probably not. Uh, so we should probably put a breakpoint here. We love the page. And see the variables here are data, tasks, description, ID. So let's go inside. Task. I should have a task variable zero. Data of tasks is an array. Task is zero. Why is it zero? It's okay. I
something wrong with iterating over the arrays. Let's try in this way. What's wrong here? Open, close, open, close. Okay. Last trial, if it doesn't work, uh, I leave it for my own work. Okay. So, so let me tell you what happens. Every time we call this function in the JavaScript code, the JavaScript will call for the server, get the JSON, and convert the JSON into a more or less like nice looking uh, HTML. Now we, we have to implement this method for all the other actions. For example, the enter button should not link to a page, uh, an HTML page with a post and so on, but should be handled by another uh, handler for the click event or the submit event on this button that will call a post function with the REST API with the right information, and so on. So all the action will be implemented by uh, JavaScript code and the post um, REST calls on the server side. Okay, so I'm sharing this version here right, that we develop right now to you, and uh, uh, on Monday, in parallel with the discussion of the feedback, you will have time in the lab with some suggestions to complete uh, the other action like uh, insert and delete uh, a task.